What is going on, guys? It's me, Walker. Today, what are the best 1v1 or 1 on 1 bunkers? What paintball gloves do I like? And why do some paintball guns hold their value better than others? Roar XD117 asks, what are the best bunkers for 1v1s? So ideally, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you're in a bunker that's gonna be easy to live at, so not like little teeny snake beam, something you can shoot out multiple sides of, and something that you can survey the entire field in. Well, so you're in a bunker like a temple or Dorito, and then you wanna stay away from those really big bunkers or bunkers that are taller than you, like the W that we're not really using anymore, but some fields might still have those around. So stay away from the W, like say cans, or like the new NXL brick if they have it standing up. And it's for sure always a good idea to stay away from the snake or any bunkers like in or on the snake. Getting in a bunker like the temple just allows you to look out many sides. You could look out the right, the left, where you could pop over the top real quick, just so you don't lose track of your opponent, so you can keep tabs on them at all times. One of the good things about that temple is you can pop over the top. You can peek over the top real quick, survey the entire field, and just duck down real fast, rather than looking out just the right side, and then like the whole left side of the field is just dead to you because the bunker's in the way. So I like that temple for quick over the top, like look arounds. And then that temple also has a lot of different shooting positions. You can, just like you're looking over the top, shoot over the top, you can shoot out the right side, you can shoot out the left side. And then on each of those sides, you could either shoot high or low. So it's gonna give you a lot of versatility and different shooting positions to kind of like keep your one-on-one -on -one opponent guessing. And then the temples are fairly easy to live at. They're gonna be at least easier to live at than those like small Doritos or that tall cake bunker, mainly because they're just wider at the bottom and then a little bit taller than those Doritos at the top. So while it's a smaller bunker, it's kind of like in the middle-ish size and it's gonna be fairly easy to live at still. And then you definitely wanna stay away from those taller bunkers like that can tower or if they're using the brick as a stand-up, the brick. So you just can't look over the top of it. So you're not gonna be able to like survey the field really quickly like you'd be able to in that temple. And you're gonna have less shooting positions. Like you can only shoot out the side, you can't like shoot over the top unless you're like nine feet tall or something ridiculous. And then you definitely wanna stay away from the snake. The snake's just really bad for one-on-one -on -one situations. It's hard to live at, you don't have a bunch of shooting positions. You can't really see that much. And it's really hard to get up and move out of it. Cause you're laying down, you can't like get up, run and go to another bunker that easy. When you're kind of like in that running and ready to go athletic position, when you're at like a temple or Dorito or stand up or whatever it is, you're definitely not in ready to go position when you're laying down the snake. So ideally you're in a bunker that's gonna give you like the most shooting positions, like over the top and out the sides, and that's something you can see a lot of the field in. But there's always gonna be like an exception to this rule. You don't wanna just always go to the same bunker. Ideally you wanna get to a spot where you're gonna have the best angle on your opponent. So maybe that is a stand up, maybe that is a big bunker. You just wanna be able to eliminate your opponent. You wanna get the best angle on them. So don't like take it for gospel, just don't go to the snake. Stay away from the snake, kinda no matter what's happening. Brett Lynch asks, what gloves do you wear? They look similar to the lightweight gloves tournament players use. Most paintball gloves on the market are over padded. I forever did not like paintball gloves. I found them really restrictive. Uh, and yeah, just couldn't shoot fast. Like I could get the rate of fire up eventually, but I feel like that like response time uh, was much slower with gloves. Mainly because they just don't fit me right. It's been very difficult for myself to find actual paintball branded gloves that fit me well. The fingers are just too short and my finger like bottoms out and they get this like weird web thing right there. So my fingers are actually too long for the fingers on most paintball gloves. So they just didn't fit me right. They were very constrictive. And then having that extra padding or like fabric on them did make it a little bit more bulky and like hard to use the trigger. I've always wanted to use gloves. I've always liked that feeling of having something on my hand, maybe a little bit of protection on my palm or my fingertips, but I couldn't wear gloves. They just drove me crazy until recently. So I'm wearing those Grease Monkey Gorilla Grip gloves. They've become super popular with a lot of tournament players, mainly just because they're super minimal. So I'm still getting like lots of feeling and can still shoot guns just as I could without gloves on. So when I have them on, it feels like I don't have gloves on because they're so lightweight. So I'm still able to like move my fingers quick and it just feels like I don't have gloves on. So I'm getting a little bit of added protection and I can still shoot my gun fast. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can check out the Grease Monkey Gorilla Glips if Grease Monkey Gorilla Grip Gloves. Grease Monkey Gorilla Grip Gloves. Oh geez. <laughs> So I like those gloves in certain situations. I, for the most part, play on the air ball field. So I'm playing on like turf and grass. So there's not a lot of like rocks or sticks or twigs or like thorns or whatever. So those really lightweight thin gloves work perfectly fine for me. But if you're gonna go out and play in the woods or like a dirt field or something like that, Ah, uh, they're probably not the greatest. I like, in that situation, the Valken Sierra glove. It's still kind of minimal, not gonna be as minimal as those Gorilla Grip gloves, but they're definitely gonna have a like thicker palm and 
I don't know, like a thicker material. So those are the two I like, the Gorilla Grip and the Valgan Syrup. A verified RCS, why do Planet Eclipse guns hold their value better than Empire guns? It basically comes down to Planet Eclipse just making better products than their competitors. At this point, like the Mac Dev guns, the Die guns, or the Empire guns just aren't as desirable as the Planet Eclipse guns. The Eclipse guns being more desirable just makes them way easier to sell than like the other manufacturers. So in this used paintball gun market, this seems to happen often. So today actually, Planet Eclipse announced the CS2 and Die announced the M3S, say in six months-ish, someone goes to sell their CS2 and it's pretty easy, right? It's like two days, bam, gun sold. Someone goes to sell that M3S and yeah, two weeks goes by, no one's really that interested, uh, so they lower the price. And two weeks goes by, they lower the price. So they keep lowering that price. It's kind of like a race to the bottom just because the guns are kind of hard to sell. So they keep lowering that price just trying to get rid of the thing. If nobody ever lowered the price and just stuck to it, uh, then you'd never see a lower resale value for certain manufacturers. But because those Eclipse guns are so easy to sell, they just sell for the asking price. Whereas like other manufacturers like Dyer Empire, the guns kind of sit for a while and they're a little bit harder to sell, so people just lower the price. And then the next guy goes to sell it, looks around for used prices, and sees that last person, that person that lowered their price, they match that price, and so on and so on and so on. It just keeps going. The real problem comes when someone needs money like real, real fast, and they just like put a gun on like PB Nation or Facebook or something like that for like half the price of the other guns out there. And then everyone else has got to match that when they go to sell theirs, and it just screws up this whole resale thing. But ultimately, yeah, it's just because Planet Eclipse guns are more popular. We see that with everything. Go look at iPhones. It's crazy how much you can buy an iPhone for for like two years ago when like you got like some Android phone that's like useless in six months. Just because iPhones are more desirable, uh, so people are willing to pay more and they're easier to sell. I am no economist by any means. Do I really know what I'm talking about? Maybe someone out there is an economist. You could like post a link in a comment or something. That'd be pretty cool. We'll make it sticky and then like, Woo, help people. Guys, that's Paintball Question Time. To have your question answered on Paintball Question Time, use that hashtag right there. PBQT, and I will answer it. Do check out another Paintball Question Time right over there. And in the meantime, maybe check out the Paintball Room My Life store by hitting that square box.